Hey guys, I never claim to be an expert on anything, but I'm getting so many print related questions lately, I thought I'd do a quick simple guide to help answer many of these questions. This video is aimed mainly at beginners, but it might be useful to even experienced printers. Hopefully, what follows will help you get resin prints that stick to the plate and, importantly, print well. For me, resin printing is all about supports. Let's start with something simple, a sphere. Resin prints typically occur upside down, forming layer upon layer from a build plate, suspended in the air. Gravity is doing its best to stop us from doing this. So if we want our print to stick to the build plate, we generally need to add supports. So let's add some supports to our sphere. That will stick well to the build plate, but will it print? With the supported sphere in your two box, we can see that your two box has colored this area red because it's telling us this area needs supporting. Let's ignore that fact for a moment and make use of these slide tools. We can see the layers being added one at a time. But look here at the bottom of the sphere. It's unsupported and trying to print in midair. There's no connection to the plate and it certainly can't stick to fresh air. So it's got no choice but to form an ugly blob on the FEB. It's a failed print. So it's critical that the lowest point of the print needs to be supported. In fact, with just one good support, this sphere may potentially print perfectly. This is because it's well anchored to the build plate and each layer can adhere to the one before it. Unfortunately, most things we print are not as simple as a sphere. Look at this model from Archvillain Games. For a moment, let's imagine that I'll try to print this model as it is, which isn't ideal, but I'll come back to orientation in a moment. This guy's got two perfectly good feet and I could start with these on the build plate, right? That looks plenty of support there and the model should print, or so you might think. Using these slide tools again, we can see the two feet appear to be doing a great job. But hang on, what's this? You can see the bottom of his cape is trying to print in midair. Again, it's an unsupported floating section. It's not connected to the plate and it can't print on fresh air. The print will drop away here if we let it. So the point is it must be supported, otherwise the print will fail. Now areas like this are called islands and they're surprisingly common. If you want to produce good prints, you'll need to start looking for them. Here's one and another. Actually, there's loads of them here. Changing the camera angle and moving around the model will help us to see more islands. And if we want a good print, this is time well spent. Now, to be fair, I'm using version 1.70 of G2 Box and enabling this little eye icon reveals these lines. These are the way Chi2 Box tells us that we have a problem area that needs supporting. And sure, we could use the auto support feature and let Chi2 Box do the work. The problem here is no auto support is perfect. So having a good understanding of why these supports are necessary will help us do a better job than auto support. If we come back to the feet, we can see support suggesting indicators there too. And that's because despite initial appearances, these feet aren't actually flat against the plate. And like it or not, feet themselves aren't actually all that flat. And this shows that maybe choosing a different orientation for the model would have been a better idea. Not only that, a large cluster of islands like this would mean our model would be littered with supports. And that means lots of clipping and lots of sanding, which is time consuming and can damage the print. To make printing easier, 
Slicers like G2 Box let us change the angle of our prints and vary the orientation. Let's take this strange shape as an example. It can't lie flat and generally, unless you want a flat face to touch the build plate, it's best to have the lowest point of the print around 5mm or so above the platform. Now we could add supports to this flat area here and this could work, but it could also lead to sagging between the supports, which misshapes and ruins the print. So avoid flat edges adjacent to the build plate. Doing this is easy enough. We can adjust the angle of the print by a few degrees. But notice the color. It's still bright red. G2 Box is warning us that we'll need lots of support to make that work at such a shallow angle. And we might still get sagging. But if we tilt the angle a little further, watch the color now. It's blue, with just the tiniest hint of red on the lowest edge. G2 Box is happy with us, and this is because the print is now at an angle that each layer can safely print on top of the previous layer, with no need for support. This angle is generally around 45 degrees, and depends a lot on the printer and the resin being used. It's possible to print steep angles, but these overhangs are weak points and can sag or even break so it's best to keep 45 degrees or under. However, if we spin around this side, we've still got a whole lot of red. So this time, let's go back and change the y-axis by 45 degrees. Look now, there's no red at all. Simply by changing the orientation of our model on two axes, we've made sure that there are no islands and each layer can safely print on the previous layer without the need for support. And really, that's the goal here. No islands and minimal supports. Just like with the sphere, in theory, one good support here on this corner and the whole thing could print. But several thin supports would probably work better. So adjusting the orientation of the print will minimize the islands and the number of supports required. It just takes a little practice to spin the print and spot the ideal position. And remember, potentially there's dozens of good positions, so look for those that best suit your model. Let's pretend for a moment that this model would print great from this angle, which it clearly wouldn't, but let's pretend it does. The supports will be going through the model's head, and no matter how carefully we are with clipping and sanding, it's going to spoil the finished print. So look for a combination of the best orientation and good support points. Now I'm cheating here to save time. This model came pre-supported by Arch Villain Games and they already went to the trouble of getting the orientation right, or at least as good as possible, as perfection isn't always an option. So all we need to do here is add supports. But there's so many options. Light, medium, rafts, depths and more. So what are the best options? Now here you'll get lots of differing opinions. But for the absolute beginner, here's my advice. Firstly, always use a raft. It's a nice, large area that helps the print stick to the plate. I tend to increase the size of my raft up to 150% to really help the resin stick firmly. For supports, keep the setting standard, at least until your experience grows. If you've already fiddled with these, just reset them to take everything back to factory settings. Try to use light supports wherever possible. These have a much smaller contact area with the print and consequently damage the surface the least. But long light supports go bendy when printing and tend to fail, so medium to heavy supports are better over distances. And of course, the weight of the print is important. A large print will need a lot of light supports, or fewer heavy ones. A tip I will share with you is that of the lowest point. 
I try to make sure that the lowest point always has at least one heavy support. Remember, as the print grows, most of the weight will fall upon this first support, particularly if other supports aren't fully printed yet. So a good first support will save you many a lost print. And for that reason, try to make sure the lowest point is an unimportant spot, such as the bottom of a foot. Then look for a few more boring spots on the print. Nice flat areas with very little detail. Add some heavy supports here as well, if possible, because this will really help your print stay fixed and firm on the plate. Obviously the size of the print will determine how many supports you need, but on something small like this, a couple of heavies will be fine. Next, look for islands. Use the slicer tool to home in on the lowest point and make sure you support these carefully. Then look for those pink areas. These may not be islands, but a little support will certainly help. Make sure there's a good gap between the print and the support. If they're too close, the support and the print can get meshed together. Remember, you can reposition your supports, and your two box doesn't always choose the best spot, so take advantage of this. A favourite trick of mine is to manually bond two, three or even more supports together. That way I can combine several light supports and make a heavy support that will stand up over distance. This gives me a thicker, stronger trunk with light supporting tips, which means plenty of support area with fewer downward supports. But be careful here. I tend to find that your two box gets a little bit buggy if I mess about with the supports like this. So get into the habit of saving regularly. I also tend to over support my prints. Many criticise me for this, but I don't get many misprints, so I don't care. Adding one or two supports to an area that your two box doesn't recommend can't do any harm, can it? In fact, I even support my supports at times, especially tall supports on large prints. Yes, fewer supports is good, but a successful print with a little extra cleanup is better than a failed print, lost time and wasted resin. So there you go, that's about as much as I can think to say on the subject of supports. If you have a good level plate and you've dialed in your resin settings correctly, then these simple tips should make sure your prints work every time. And through this video, I hope I've answered most of the questions folks have been asking me lately. Of course, I've been talking about your two box throughout this video, and slicing software can make a massive difference. Your two box is good, but I think I found a much better and much simpler slicer. But for that, you'll have to tune into my next video. So if you have any questions or comments guys, as always, feel free to drop me a line. So happy printing guys, take care, and thanks for watching.